Uh, we just got on the uh, on the Euro Tunnel, mate, to uh, start the uh, last ever Jordemeyer's headline. Well, our last ever European tour, really. Uh, well, it is our last European tour. It's very weird. I don't think it's really kind of uh, hit home yet, but. To help us provide the greatest yeah. possible level of safety. <laughs> Onwards and downwards and all that. <laughs> Well, it's just my my life was growing up. I grew up listening to rock music through my dad, um, the bands like Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Frank Zappa, and stuff. And you know, I always thought it was cool, like you know, seeing these dudes playing guitar. I thought it was like an awesome thing, playing in front of thousands, tens of thousands, whatever, how many a thousand, hundred people. I was like, it was, I thought it was like going to be a cool job. And then you see, like, watch groups on. Top of the Pops back in the day and chart show on ITV and like you see him play live well some of the time it was live and it's like oh that'd be such a sick job to do. I went to a school that was a performing arts school it was class classified as a performing arts school so I had like a really good music uh, music's like department in the school so we were encouraged to learn an instrument at the start when we first came to secondary school high school we were like learning the instrument blah, blah blah so I learned guitar um, it was cool and then like being a kid learning the instrument you just want to be in a band straight away so like fuck yeah let's form some bands form many bands and then I discovered a band called Glassjaw and their singer Daryl I was like fuck I want to sing man this is cool like he's amazing like I just want to be like him and then I got into, through Glassdoor, I got into like bands like American Nightmare and stuff like that. And then I got into hardcore and then I was like, this is cool. So yeah, Daryl Palumbo, Glassdoor, being in a performing arts school, just wanted to be in a band, go on tour, hang out. I used to be really into football, surprisingly enough. Everyone asks me now what your favourite football team is and I'm always just like, I like football, like, I used to support Watford and then I found Metallica. <laughs> Uh, about the age of 11 and then just kind of like it all just went to shit really uh, yeah from about the age of 11 just like started to go to shows like my brother was a really big influence on me he um, uh, four years older than me and he took me to a lot of my first shows um, just like just loved it man like everything about it you know you'd I mean my first it was my first proper show was the Wild Hearts at Brixton Academy and it was just like oh my god like this is this is crazy, this is so fucked, like, this is everything I want it to be, and <clears throat> you'd go on, you know, you'd be looking at Brixton, and, you know, you'd see people scattered around the stage, and as well as, like, the band playing, I'd always be like, oh man, like, I wonder where that door goes to, and, like, I wonder who those people are, and, like, how the fuck did they get up there, and, like, everything about it, and you just really kind of, you know, along with that, you know, you start discovering bands, and, you know, and then with that you start reading magazines that, you know, subjectively tell you <laughs> what to listen to. Um, hopefully you find your own thing that you you would like and get into and that becomes your life. And then you, somehow you, your dream f that you want for your life is to be that dude on stage. Today is uh, our first show of the uh, last tour of Europe, and uh, sorry, my voice is going. I'm not actually. I am emotional, but I'm not about to cry. Um, it's Eindhoven at Dynamo, like a really sick, cool venue. Um, last time we played in Holland, and um, it was a wild show. Like 
you know, they, they, it was insane. Like most of the time, the kids were on the stage. Like I was fearing for my life a couple of times. I thought I was going to be taken out because of my dodgy knee. I thought someone was going to knock me over and I'd be like incapacitated from set. But it was really good. It's been like a really nice day. It's been really chill. It's a bit cold and wet now, but at least it stopped raining. And you know, it's 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 weird that this is the last time we're playing Holland. You know, like it hasn't really sunk in yet. And it's, it's only really just starting to sink in now. I mean, like, the amount of times we played Holland, you know, been to Amsterdam, Eindhoven, so many places. And, you know, it's, it's, it was an end of an era, really, isn't it? But, you know, um, yeah, I love this place. Europe's always been such a big part of your demise. The majority of the summers for the last five years have just been spent in the realms of Germany and mainland Europe and stuff like that. So we owe a lot, we owe so much of our career to the mainland Europe and Scandinavia and all that. So we always knew it was going to be mad. Like we all knew it was going to kick off uh, in mainland Europe. So there's not really much I can say apart from it lived up to his expectations and we thank everyone who's ever been involved in your demise or seen your demise in Europe, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, uh, Portugal, Holland, um, list goes on, Austria, list goes on, list goes on, like Scandinavia as a whole. There's so many people that have helped your demise through it all and we had obviously we had to go play there one last time because we owe it to them and it was amazing some of the funniest times were on that tour and i can't really say anything else about it because we've been there so many times but it was amazing you know this this europe is always going to be amazing there's no two ways about it the best some of the best shows i've ever played in my life have been in europe and it's always the funnest place to go back to and the more you go back the more you know about it so you find out cool as shit but yeah europe europe's europe man europe's the best you have to go to europe It was awesome. Played uh, with Colburn and um, oh, Betrayal. Awesome dudes, like great bands. Never just a boring moment. Just always something crazy going on, especially with Oz and all the crazy videos. And I don't know. It's welcoming too. You know, we're never we're never afraid to. It's like be somewhere where we're, maybe we shouldn't be, or we're just everything's cool. Everyone's awesome. It's been, I mean, it goes without saying, one of the craziest shows I've ever seen. Um, everyone's been super cool. It's been awesome seeing your demise again. It's cool seeing them in their own element out here and just kids going crazy. And I don't know, just good vibes overall. Everyone just super cool. Everyone getting along. Really, really awesome tour to be a part of. Yeah, I think it was pretty great. Uh, all the dates were awesome to us as like to your demise uh, and yeah I think if this would be wouldn't be the last tour we definitely we all definitely would do it again we all didn't uh, know what to expect and uh, it turned out pretty pretty cool cool guys uh, we had a lot of fun getting a bit close it's always like you're getting closer uh, when it comes to the end uh, and uh, yeah so right now at the end I could say it was pretty cool pretty good guys and then I put it down on the counter to get my money out and I was so tired that I just thought I left it there but then when I came back in I put my wallet in my butt in, the, in my shoe like the safety thing fuck how are you feeling Oz? yeah good mate definitely got over my hangover <laughs> God, I was so fucked this morning it was horrible how much did you drink last night? I don't actually know. You said, I, you I, said I, over 20 beers during the course of the day. And some body as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know.
<laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> and the vodka as well. Yeah. You didn't snore last night that much. Though. It was fun. It, it was a great tour. Like, you know, playing like our, well, one of my favourite countries ever to play, especially in Europe, is Germany. I love Germany. Not only are the shows sick, the hospitality sick, the beer is always amazing. Seriously, especially Munich, the hell beer, incredible. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. It was cold. <laughs> it was very cold. But um, yeah, it was very enjoyable. But the thing was, it hadn't sunk in yet. That was our last time in Europe. That was awesome. Like Europe has always been one of our like best places to play. Germany, Belgium, especially. Uh, again, it was just cool to do it one last time. I think it was like a fucking long time ago now, actually. Uh, but again, it's just good to do it one last time. Wish we could have done it longer, actually. It was kind of short, but I don't know. Do you, do, do you know what? Oh, he's down don't there, you love isn't he? how right. Jimmy never packs his stuff down, and right? I do it for him every day, man. Jimmy, right, we finished, and Jimmy walked straight off stage because he'd already seen a seed that needed planting. Before, before the last note had been rung out, he was off stage. What do you know, like, I, like, even though I'm fucking damage man like i still damage. have to pack down jimmy's stuff Daddy he just damage. walks away and I have to pack his stuff walks away, away. walks away Us. like me and my bands like got to know your demise in two i think it was the beginning of 2011 when we played in vigo in spain um and we just had like a a fucking crazy night and, and just partied a lot and sold a lot of merch played a good show uh, I just really got to sort of know them and understand them as friends rather than just acquaintances or people that we just like pass by or whatever and could see that they were doing a really good thing and um, we've been like kicking it at their shows like whenever they play like nearby us we, we, we like uh, kick along to them and have a really good time um, which is why I'm here again tonight because <laughs> uh, because uh, I, I heard they were in town, I wanted to surprise them, wanted to hang out, say my, my last goodbyes, kind of, um, and, uh, and just sort of, yeah, just catch up, as always. I mean, it won't change, like, after, after this tour, like, I'll still keep in touch with them and still be good friends, and so, yeah, it makes no difference. It just sucks that they're, they're not going to come through here as a band anymore. Yes! Yes! <laughs> what a dickhead. Nice bitch. You're wearing a fucking Yordamai t-shirt. That's amazing. It costs, it costs, like, a costs 105 euros a night to live here. That's right, man. In uh, the outskirts of Stuttgart. Jeebus chips. <laughs> it's fucking free. You know, I, com really I completely forgot where we were playing today during the stage. <laughs> and every time I said Stuttgart, I thought I was saying in the wrong place. I think Yorda Mice Court, like, you know, brought a lot of controversy on itself through the fact that we did do a lot of things ourselves. We, we were a very DIY band. And, you know, a lot of people respect that. But when we started picking up the fame, you know, not fame as such, but, you know, fans, people who want, you know, those kids who liked us, who wanted to see us, you know, starting to sell out shows, people are like, oh, hang on, you know, like this band are like sold out as such. And the thing was, we never were. We were always the same dudes. Like, you know, we never earned loads of money or anything. We're just like normal guys you could just come up to like in the street, any normal, you know, any normal people. And I think a lot of the time, people f see fame as you selling out. Not fame, but like, you know, success as such. And, you know, people are like, oh, you must, you know, rock stars now. It's like, dude, like, I still live at home with my mum and like I, I work in a pub, you know, it's not, I'm not famous, I'm not living the lifestyle or anything, you know, I'm, I'm still working, like all the dudes in the band are working, it's just like, you know, just normal, We're like, you know, this is fun, this is cool and... Uh, I guess it started with the, the vocal disc change really, I guess, because uh, there wasn't really that much before, I guess there was a little bit, but not really, um, and I guess that just divided opinion and split opinion generally. Uh, and 
I guess it just went from there. And I guess people didn't really let let st don't let stuff go, do they, that easily? And if you don't, if you want, if you don't like that that band or because they did that, or whatever, then that's probably gonna. If they want to hold a grudge, they can hold a grudge. It's cool. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why we attracted so much, so much like controversy around us, really. Um, that's a tough question. I just, well, kind of the people we are as well. I think maybe had quite a lot to do with it. You know, we uh, we're not. You know, we're not rude and we're not dickheads, but we speak our minds and say what we think, and certain people don't like that, I guess, you know. And, um, and and we're also at the same time as that, you know. I think we're pretty nice people, so if you're on our side, you're on our side, you know. And it's if you're part of if you're one of us, then you're definitely one of us, you know. We just always did what we wanted to. I know it sounds we've said that a lot. Uh, it sounds kind of cliche, but. We literally have done exactly what we wanted to the entire way. Never let anybody tell us what to do or how to sound. Anything we did was because we wanted to do it. And that, that, that means being controversial, and that doesn't mean anything to me. We did what we wanted to, which I can say a lot of bands don't do that. Uh, I don't know. We just seem to be a band that people love talking about, like the Marmite of music, pretty much. You either love us or you hate us. I could care less either way. To be fair, the golden age get like caused a bit of controversy because we had some singing on it. Oh my god! Like you know, singing. Oh, like uh, we're a pop punk band, faggots, all that nonsense. Like it's like, oh shut up, man. It's just like we didn't do it for making money. We did it because we wanted to. We wanted to do something new. We wanted to push ourselves as musicians as writers of music you know we want to do something different and it was cool like you know everyone wanted to do something different we're all on, this, all on the same wavelength and I don't regret doing it one bit like maybe like, you know I could we could have written even poppier songs but you know we just release and write what we want to write honestly I don't really know like hand on heart I don't really know I think that a lot of people had this problem because we were a gateway band like we were a band that weren't like hard enough to be like a true hardcore band in some people's eyes and we're a band that you know we we're the first kind of heavy band that people maybe encounter and then they listen to us and then it it opens them up to listening to other bands and they get into those other bands and then it's very easy to be like oh no fuck them they're pussies like they're not hard enough like so i think there was that and obviously i think we came across the fact that we didn't give a fuck like your demise was just a massive troll, really, if you think about it. Like, we did what we wanted, and I think it just really, really pissed people off because we did that, and it was we were an easy target, I guess, because of everything that had happened to us, you know? No way in I was naive to pursue 
kind of went into the tour um, knowing it was going to be it was going to be good, but <clears throat> I guess us as a band, we've always kind of not really taken anything for for granted. Um, we've always kind of worried that the shows are going to be good and whether people still care or whether we're relevant, even though it's only a you know, short period of time in between the the tours or whatever. But it's just been uh, it's been absolutely it's been absolutely crazy and just uh, I don't know. I kind of I guess it makes you realise that we've done something really cool. Makes you realise that a lot of kids care and uh, it's really nice. Just makes us feel makes us feel good. Kind of weird because we always use the term low expectation and that's not a low expectation towards our fans or the way <coughs> the way we think the shows are going to be it's just uh for us because we've never really taken for granted how big the band is um and it's been really humbling for these kids to come out and and just really support it and support the band because it means so much to them and it's been amazing it's been mind-blowing that we've had this kind of impact on these kids so my name is timo i'm 20 years old and i'm from munich I've been a yodi mice fan for four years now uh, the first station for me was stuttgart and then uh, i still came to me and said oh nice to see you um, and then I told him, yeah, listen to me, I'm coming to many venues. And he said, oh, really? Let me get you a pass so you don't have to pay. And when he came back, he gave me the pass. It was, it was amazing. I c cannot, cannot describe this feeling. He g gave it to me and it was like, suddenly I'm, I'm a dream come true. And I'm a part of, of, of your demise and that was really something I really dreamed about. S sitting backstage with these guys, seeing uh, different cities with these guys and hanging around with these guys the whole day, it's just just amazing. It's a really nice feeling. This life on tour makes me really feel alive and it's really something that means much to me. That's my boy! This motherfucker has been to every German show. I've known him for a little while. We hooked him up with a pass just because why buy tickets? And a uh, great little dude. He's the reason why we've done what we've done completely. Uh, we're in Wiesbaden today. It's the last German show of our European farewell tour and right now I'm sitting with Felix on the couch Hello. freezing our asses off because um, the windows are open we can't figure out how to close them and uh, drinking a beer. Yeah. Loving life. Loving life mate as always always loving life. I'm a bit bummed out this is our last ever German show because we've played so many shows in Germany and they've all, always been amazing. Germany's been very supportive um, they really care about, like the promoters really care about the bands, they put on good food, you know, good rider, plenty of beer, um, you know, just, they really look after you and it's, you know, it's quite sad that this is, this is it, this is the last one. It's going to be emotional, man. Yeah. We've gone to Germany, we've basically lived in Germany for a very long time. The Germans have supported us throughout the whole of your demise, so we owe a lot to our German fans because they've always come out to our shows. We were discussing this earlier, like we must have played over like a hundred odd since I've been in the band anyway, like hundred like over well over a hundred German shows. So it's quite yeah, it's gonna be a sad one to be fair. Cool. Yeah. But it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, it's gonna be good. It should be like it's sold out, so it's gonna, big. It's gonna be fun. Excited to play it. Gonna be sad to say goodbye, but you know. What happens when you break up in it, really?
So, last show of the um, European leg, mate, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Uh, it hasn't really sunk in, I'm not going to lie, I haven't really thought about it that much, you know, that it's actually the last time, we're, like, we're done with Germany now, never got to play Germany again. I've played Germany more than I've ever played anywhere else in my life, so it's kind of weird, but it hasn't really sunk in, like, because we've still got so much touring to do at this moment in time, it's not really something I've thought about too much, but... I guess it will be weird when it's all done. In 2011, your demise was scheduled to play Pukkelpop in uh, Belgium, but the day before they were supposed to play, there was a big storm on the festival that killed five people, and the festival was shut down for the remainder of the festival. So they, uh, the band heard that one of the victims was actually a big Your Demise fan, and then they contacted me because I've done a few shows for them in the past uh, in Belgium if, to ask me if I could put on a benefit show for them in Belgium, a benefit show for the Pukkel Pop victims and the people that got injured on the fest festival. So uh, I talked with Stu about that. We put the show together. It was Jordi Mais headlining with three local Belgian hardcore bands. And um, yeah, there were like 300, 400 people there was a good atmosphere, the band made like sure that everything, every penny, every cent that came in went directly to the victims and was a really nice gesture of them. They came to mainland Europe like especially for that a few days earlier before a big tour with Enter Shikari just to do something for the people that were affected by the storm on Pop in 2011. Like uh, their uh, agent Tom contacted me to uh, do that show because uh, I've done a few shows for them in the past and it was always a pleasure working with the band, always a good time so it's uh, nice to uh, be able to do this final show for them in Belgium and in mainland Europe um, as well. That's how hot the venue is right now, I'm steaming up. It's hot. It's hot as It's sweaty. One. Last one, hottest one, yeah. Fucking hell. Dying already. It's gonna be so hot. It's gotta be the hottest one, isn't it? It's gonna be the hottest one. <laughs> it already is the hottest one.
Japan is weird, like, every band's like, oh, you know, going to a certain place is like, like you have the certain areas of wherever you play that you, like, you look forward to going to because it's always like, it, it's always popping there, like, it always kicks off. And it's weird to say it, but like Japan is always one of those places for us. So it was cool that we got to go back there because one, Japan is probably the coolest place in the world. Everything's amazing there. Everyone's so ahead of, the, ahead of everything. Like fashion is amazing there. Everyone's ahead of everything there. It's so cool. So the fact that we can say that Japan is one of the most popping places to go play, we had to go back there one last time. We had to. So playing there one last time and selling out shows to these kids who you're the most genuinely meant something really insane like meant something it was it was brilliant I can't even imagine this boy there holy fucking shit you sure Roads leading to Tokyo are all closed. We were stuck in traffic for, I don't even know how long now, two, three, maybe even four hours. And it hasn't moved. So uh, right now we're going to the city just down here um, to get the train, bullet train actually, to Tokyo. So it's the first time we've ever been on a bullet train, so it's quite exciting actually. I got really sick actually in Japan, uh, which is kind of a bummer, like standard me would get sick on our last worldwide tour, but uh, it was just cool that we get to, got to go to those places again for like the last time. Asian Australia tour was sick. I mean, it was the last international shows we played. We played Kuala Lumpur for the first time ever. First and last time, it's like hello and goodbye. Honestly, one of the sickest shows I've ever played. 
in like a tiny room. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this is like a, a practice room and it was like tiny, like this tiny little room and it was like three, 400 kids just jam packed. It was like the hottest show I ever played. And it was so insane. Sometimes like kids were just like literally falling over onto the stage because there's so many people there. And it was so hard sometimes to play because you're just being overcrowded. That was sick. And then Singapore was sick. Never been to Singapore, again, was awesome. Soundwave in Australia, which was our second and you know final Australian like tour, and again we were hanging out with our mates. It was it was really cool because it's a tour of mates. It's cool playing, you know, and it's awesome playing the shows. But it's also awesome seeing your mates' bands play, like hanging out with them, and it's just you know lovely weather, just a great vibe. It was fun, you know. It was it was very emotional, very emotional because it was you, we knew it was like yeah, it's coming up to the end now, and you know just lived each day just loving it, loving life and. You know, I mean, you got, you got, you get, you have the good, you know, the good side. It was amazing, and the bad side, you know, coming to an end. But you know, always think of the positive. Always look at the positive. It was, you know, and it was sick every day. Sun, shows, hanging out, drinking beers. You know, it was awesome. Soundwave again was, was amazing. So many people on that tour that we could hang out with every day. Just like good friends, man, that's the best part about when you just go to festival bands from all over the world that you're friends with all in one place. Just hangouts, man. It was awesome. Uh, I know it's cool, we just got to like tie up, tie up all the ends rather than like, oh, I wish we got to go to this place again. We just managed to go to our favorite places, I guess, one last time, and that was amazing. Oh, this is going to be good. You organize like tell. we, like our friends D's and Izzles. How many times have we toured them? Uh, the US one? Australia, US, Europe. Oh, on the Rebellion tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, three like long tours, probably. Many tours. Yeah. Sometimes, like, Tara needs to realize you're burnt and you got to call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've been, uh, oh yeah, we met him, remember the first time we met him in uh, Indonesia, that weird outdoor show? Was That's like the first time we ever played with first, him? Yeah, first time we ever played with Your Demise was in Indonesia in uh, the big industry Ban, where? Bandung or whatever. <clears throat> that was the first time meeting weird him. Weird hats. <laughs> they like Jordan shoes. Not Jordan the person in terror, they hate him. <laughs> Jordan shoes and Supreme gear that probably cost him fucking... $200 a t-shirt, but they buy a lot of it. <laughs> they were always really nice because I'm a germaphobe, so anytime I wanted to smoke weed, they would roll a joint and let me light it and hit it like three times and then pass and, then and pass leave, it. so. <laughs> Very kind people. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, yeah, it must be nice I mean, to I'll say... Band and go on tour. I want to stay on my couch forever. I don't know if anyone will say this, I think it's dumb. That they're breaking up and not playing any more shows and shit because they were they're fucking awesome and they uh, they had a, a a great thing going. But hey, shit, what, I don't know the inner workings people do what they gotta do. But you Rest know, it's 2014, so I'm sure they'll be back in like <laughs> six months or so. 
<laughs> just like every other band, like, you know, some people in this room. <laughs> Anyone in this room doing a reunion show? Coming up soon. Like some people in this room, I don't know, you know, they break their bands up and then, uh, you know, play these big shows. <laughs> None of this is very entertaining at all. <laughs> Hi, your demise, <laughs> dickheads. Hi. Yo, come on, that's good. That's good. Come on, that's bro. good for the camera. Come on. Don't be mad. I'm just playing. Jordan's jaw no, hurts. Isn't a bad move. <laughs> Perfect. Cheers right. to your demise. Um, so that shit was 2000 and what? 11. 2011. We were invited overseas across the Atlantic by our friends in your demise. Um, at a time where we as a band weren't really getting recognized and, and, and you know anyone that thought anything of Let Live was uh, pretty quiet about it and, and they made it they made it a, an effort to, to loudly say we want to take this band out so we had our first uh, you know overseas venture with Your Demise courtesy of Your Demise and beyond just you know being a band they were they, were, they instantly became like like brothers to us. I mean, we kept doing things, and and we kept seeing each other. And every time we see each other, it was just like the first time we toured together, and the first time we connected. And even before that, me personally, I got to meet the boys um, before the tour um, uh, in the states when they came over for uh, for a tour. With, it was Devil's Prada, right? Yeah. So they're over with Devil's Prada, and I, I got to go out uh, to the kettle in in, in in Manhattan with them, and. Um, I remember thinking like, damn, like their swagger's ill and they're fucking super chill. And and although this may sound ignorant, that is literally what was going through my head when I met them. Um, and then I got to see them do their thing every night, you know, on that tour. And then I got to see them do their thing for a few more nights. And then we did other tours together. And, and it seemed like something in this world kept putting us back together, together and together. And that's something I'll always recognize. And um, I hope more than anything that something else in this world brings us back together again. And actually, I believe it will, because that's sort of like a bond that maybe you watching this may not have felt yet. I hope you do, because it's something really powerful, really strong, and we got to share that with your demise. So that being said, I guess I'll, I'll end it with uh, YD 2009 till forever. Fuck you. All right. My boys in YD, first tour we ever did. Well, first like European tour, actually second European tour we ever did. First proper Euro like European tour we ever did was with them, and it was not only like one of the best experiences of my life, but they were the best tours ever about it. Like we were supporting them, they split everything with us 50/50. We had the best time of our lives. It's something we'll never forget. And as a result of that, we've become best of friends ever since. It doesn't matter how long between seeing each other. Every time we see each other, we're right back to that point. That's like a like you know a brothership, like a friendship that you you can't you can't replace, you can't change, you can't get any other way. We've experienced things together that other people will never experience. So uh, you know that's something that I've got with them that I really truly appreciate. And I'm very bummed out about the fact that they're not doing it anymore. But I appreciate the fact that I got to be a part of what they did. And you know hopefully in some way you know they get something from that as well. But you know Bali for the boys. It's not you know it's not the end yet. Maybe we get to do something more. So you know, fingers crossed. Alright, we met Your Demise when we toured Japan with them in Facts, and ever since then we've been fucking best friends with them, one of the best bands we've ever toured with, we fucking love them more than anything, and we're gonna miss them, but we fucking love them. Your Demise for life, love you guys. Yeah, I've known the Your Demise guys for a while, um, we took them out on their first uh, American tour um, a long time ago, and uh, within a couple days we just instantly became uh, best buds with those guys. Um, you know, outside of the band, they're all really like down to earth, funny, just genuine dudes. And um, it was a real big shock to me uh, to hear, you know, of a band that was doing so well and, and touring so hard and for so long to just like call it quits. But you know, um, it's something that you know every band struggles with. They, um, you know, they they have life that just happens in in, in the way, and they um, sometimes it's just not the easiest thing to just keep going on the road and keep just doing what you got to do. And um, yeah, I, I'm. It's pretty awesome to know that even though you know they might not be a band anymore, those are still some of the some of the best friends that we got. And anytime we come over to England, we're gonna be hanging out with those dudes and just uh, hanging out with the old times. So um, 
just wish all those dudes the best, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get, get them back on the road at some point in the future, but uh, yeah, peace boys. What it was, but it's like, you know, you go on Lambo and you hear all these bands breaking up, and I, I think I first found out about Your Demise breaking up through following Stu on Facebook or something. And it bummed me out. I don't know why. I remember, I think I was on tour and I told everybody and I was just like, fuck, that sucks because we go on tour with so many bands. You know what I mean? Like for the last eight years that we've been touring, we tour so many bands and so many bands like have their cliques. It's like high school, you know what I mean? It's like these people hang out and these guys hate these people and these people hate, you know what I mean? There's all these sorts of weird shit. And Your Demise has always been one of those bands where it's like, those dudes are fucking, those are friends. You know what I mean? Those are fucking, that's a family. You know what I mean? And they do everything together and, um, of course, Oz gets picked on the most. <laughs> and he takes it like a fucking champ. Um, and, and it's just, it's, cra it, it's, it's crazy and it's real sad for me. I remember I was looking at the, the, the poster of the last shows. I'm like, fuck, that sucks. Cause you know, they, they, they brought us out here for one of our best tours that we've ever done. You know, and those are some of the fucking coolest kids, you know, and they're so genuine and, and um, you know, their band is fucking sick and they just, they, they just went out and did fucking, they just did it the way that they wanted to do it, you know? And, and, and like I said, those dudes, those, those dudes were a fucking family and it was inspiring to see that, you know, cause it's, it's, uh, it's easy to get, to get caught up in petty bullshit, but the, those dudes know how to communicate with each other like, like brothers do, you know? So fucking sad to see them go. Love all you fucking guys. I got the devil in my eye. Oh, yeah. Go on, do it, go on. Do it. 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 Do there's so many bands on it, it's crazy big. And the, but the most important thing was the fact that there was just like a million of our friends on the tour. And that, that's what I was most looking forward to, just because like fundamentally being in a band is sick. You get to play shows, you get to make, you know, play to loads of people and it's crazy. But like the friends that you have like on tour, that you make on tour, like through being in a band, through other people in, in bands, is like the most important part to me. Like that's the coolest shit ever. And, uh, and thankfully, Soundwave this year had like a bunch of our friends on it. So it was just really cool hanging out with all those people that we, we like a lot. And uh, that's, mainly what I was, that's mainly what I was looking forward to. Uh, it was such a great way to finish off the band, like, um, to be able to basically do a mini world tour in like a month was just absolutely brilliant. It was, got to hang out with so many mates, we get to go to so many cool places, spend that time, that intimate time with each other, not intimate in that way, but a very intimate time, you know, it was, it was amazing, so good, perfect almost, perfect way to end the band. DVD. Yeah. <laughs> you died. Uh, die hard. One more sip. One more sip. One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. Ah! One more. Kill the ball. Kill it. Yeah, get to this guy. Yeah, kill it. Ah! Whoa! Come here, baby. <laughs> oh, let me take some photos first. Put it to your mouth, put it to your mouth. More than one. No, take that. Right in half. You got the pictures? Go. You ready? Go, Oz. How is it? On the tail. Burn, mate. How is it, man?
Two versions, so I'm gonna make one version with all of them on. Like, when we go. All right, Mike Deuce. <laughs> Hello. Let's talk a bit about your demise. How long have you known the guys? Um, I went to the same school as um, Stu and Oz, but they were like. I think when I, when I was in first year, Oz was in like, upper sixth or something like that, and then. I think Stuart already left. I can't remember. No, I think he might have been there. Um, and then um, I've got an interesting story about Oz, actually. He originally, when I was about 12, um, started teaching me to play guitar. But um, he taught me and he taught this other kid in my year. And um, he, t he told the other kid that he didn't think I was any good. And, of course, the kid told me and I was heartbroken that someone so cool, like, that was in a band that was older than me, um, thought I was crap at guitar. And yeah, I've still never forgiven him <laughs> for that. We only we toured with your demise once, twice. The garland. Uh, it was, yeah. Hey man. Shit. Yeah, we, we toured with them. We toured with them twice. We did um, a headline tour with them. It was your demise, these nuts, more than life, lower than Atlantis in 2009. Was it Ben? Yeah. I think. Yeah, in 2009. And. That was good. You know those those mattresses that we were jumping on? Yeah. You were just face down like that. And then everyone, we piled up the mattresses and everyone was jumping over you on the, off the tables onto the... We had the mattress up. I've got a video of you as well, yeah. jumping yeah. into it and then he the came, mattress collapses. Oh, yeah. One day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember saying. Is that when He's, he robbed a bottle of champagne out <laughs> of the yeah. service station <laughs> at nine in the morning and I drank it. I drank the whole thing. Well, gutted because you know, they've been going for so long and I think they deserve to be... Um, no, they're obviously they were very successful and they've done, you know, they've got to travel the world and do cool shit. But um, I do think that they, you know, should have, for the amount of time they're together and the amount they've done, something, something didn't work out. I don't know. They should have just been bigger. They've inspired so many other bands to sort of play music. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's gutting. But, you know, I'm sure that they'll go on to do great things individually. Um, I think Oz is going to be a road sweeper, which I don't think any of us thought that he'd be capable of before. But um, yeah, so everyone's, everyone's pretty happy about that. The thing was, I always did music for fun. I always wanted to do it for fun. And I always said to myself, if I start getting involved in the business side, or it gets too businessy, it loses its fun. I think the most important thing playing live music well for me I'm not sh sure if it's for other people isn't the money isn't the money isn't the fame it's being able to travel meet new people and you know play music that's the important thing and a lot of bands nowadays forget about this you know they're just like oh do it for the money do it for the fans do it for the fame it's like it's not for me personally it wasn't about that it was all about you know playing shows playing music to people and meeting people and yeah, I mean, there is a lot of shysters in the music industry and we've met a few and dealt with a few, but you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like a necessary evil of the music industry. The reason that we managed to be a band as long as we were a band was basically because of our live shows. Like, if we couldn't tour as much as we did, we'd have had nothing to do and therefore we couldn't really have kind of given the excuse to be in a band full time and give it our everything. But uh, in terms of like you know record labels and record sales, when you're a band, when a, a band like us, when it's not, it doesn't even you know it doesn't even register on like most of anything charts wise or anything like that you know, or it and you don't see a penny of it so because you sell so little. Uh, so I mean I, I I was a strong supporter and always have been of free music. So I encourage anybody to download your demise if they want to download it. I always have done, and because I I wouldn't know half the band, half of the artists, half of the DJs, half of the producers, anybody that I like if I just didn't get their stuff for free because I can't, I can't afford to pay for music like in large quantities, the amount that I want to listen to I can't afford to pay for. 
and the, and I get their t-shirts or go to their shows or whatever you know. It's all it's it's different now, to, you know, to how it was way back when. Not even that long ago, really. To be fair. What do you think? What's your What's your opinion about it? Of the music industry. Yeah. Uh, I can't say. Just fucking. The music industry is just full of people. Uh, that, from my experience, don't know a lot about music. They know a lot of how to, a lot of ways to like manipulate bands and make them do what they want. But when it comes to music, they don't really have a fucking clue about it. They, you read magazines, and it's guys who their favorite top ten records ever is like shit you listen to when you're twelve years old. Basically, a lot of people that haven't grown up from being a greebo. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like not not many good people in the music industry. I think it's a load of fucking shit. I think the music industry is fucking toxic. I think it's a horrible place to be around. I think there's people that you think are honest and want to be with you, help you out, are fucking scum. There's a lot of good people saying that. I'm very fortunate to be in the posi position that I am now with what I'm doing for work, that I've met pe good, good people through it. So I can't say it's all bad, but it's, it's a shame because I feel a bit like, I'm glad that I don't have anything to do with it, that side of it. I'm glad I'm not in a band. I'm glad that I don't have to deal with people's bullshit. I'm glad that I don't have to fucking be a part of something that kind of physically makes you sick when you really think about it. I'm glad that we didn't play the game, even though a lot of people think we did. You're in a band. The band is a product. The band is, to the people in the band, their art, you know what I mean? Like, it's their art. They're not really thinking about marketing themselves at all until the music industry comes in. So the band is there, you're chilling, you're writing good music, you're having fun with it. And then the music industry, well, people come in, see your band, if you're cool, like if people like your band, they'll think we can make money out of you. Obviously, that's how the music industry works, everyone knows that. But the people trying to sign your band may like your band for a bit, but they're all thinking about is the, is the money, obviously, because that's how they make their job. So. It's shit because as soon as something cooler comes along, people will drop you like a hat. People will drop you straight away. And that band can fade or it could break up or whatever. Um, there's too many people are lying to you all the time because they want to make your band, they want the band to trust them. So they, people, uh, there's too many people telling people what the band wants to hear. And in the end, it all gets fucked up. And yeah, I think it's a fucked up thing, but you can't live without it. So it's, it has its evils, but it's just gonna be there. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, there are some great people out there, some really good people out there who genuinely do wanna help. But there is also too many and a lot of selfish people who are just doing it because they want to get by in life and fair play because in the long run that's what anyone wants to do anyone wants to support their family make some money have a good life and fair play if you're going to lie and cheat your way through it but on the flip side of that you doing that is going to fuck someone else's career life up so it's a, it's it's a dog eat dog world and it's shit but that there's nothing you can do about it so that is what i say on the music industry I like to say I made the uh, the spring rolls myself, but I didn't. I ain't got time for that. Just got home from practice, the last day of practice. Surrounded by merch. Surrounded by merch. This, as you can see, not really much space, but that's what I've gotten used to for the last fuck however many long years. I hadn't really thought about it until like Ed, Ed was just like, oh, this is our last practice. I was just like, fuck, like, it's crazy. And then when we, um, you know, we were loading the van to go home and I was talking to, to you and 
it just really kind of like started to hit me and I was like fuck and I've been in this kind of like weird mindset ever since that it's just like you don't really even you don't I've never really thought about the end of the band because we've always said that as soon as someone leaves this this lineup Ed Stu Telby Jim Oz <laughs> sorry Oz um, as soon as you know if someone wasn't feeling it then that'd be it we'd be done that's what happened I'm gonna kick the chicken now Hello, hello. Should do, hello. mate. All right, mate. How you doing? What the fuck took you so long? Where'd you get the van up Traffic, from? mate. <laughs> because you're fucking late, so we have to go mate, straight I to the station to pick everyone 7 up. 7am. What time did he come and get you? Admittedly, he did get me at, uh, like, 9.30. Like in two hours. He was just huh? sitting. I checked the traffic, man. There's no fucking traffic. Mate, there was. You were just late. Just admit you woke I wasn't up late. late. I, I just admit you fucking woke I wasn't, up late. No, I, I just would admit, admit if I was woke up late. I wasn't late. Just no. admit you woke up late. I left at 7 a.m. Oh, you're in your bedroom, not your living room. Yeah, no, I'm going to put it in my bedroom, mate. Don't worry. Sure. No, just put it on there so I can get the video. So, oh, come. I was thinking that Ed was actually going to load something, but the only reason they moved the gear is so they can get their weed out of the fucking car. I will load, mate. I know, I know, I know you will, but I mean, you're right there. It's my priority, mate. But I was quite surprised how quick you were, like, you know, picking up gear. If we did everywhere where people wanted us to play, we'd probably still be touring right now. Unfortunately, you know, you can't really, you can't play to every single kid in the world. Like, it's impossible. Um, people always, people always, and also people are like, we went on for a year, what the fuck are you doing, blah, blah, blah. You know, why you, I, have, I thought they'd broken up already, you know. Fucking hell, year long farewell tour. Yeah, year long farewell tour. Some bands fucking say they're gonna end and never tour again. Some bands, you know, just break up, bad terms. Fuck this, fuck this guy, fuck that guy, fuck this guy, and never tour again. We have no beef with each other at all. We just wanted to call it quits. So instead of letting kids, instead of, wouldn't you be so much happier seeing one last show or knowing that there was a last show rather than never having one whatsoever? So we just played the places we could physically play and in a time frame so it went on a year but it's done now so you can't complain about it if you weren't there you weren't there yeah I see that quite a lot people always are uh, accusing us of milking the breakup but I don't really see anything wrong with it I feel like it's, it's a fair way of doing it like we wanted to uh, let everyone know we were breaking up so if they wanted to come see us for the last time then they could rather than just slice it right there There'll be a lot of people that wouldn't have been able to see us or haven't seen us that wanted to for the first or last time. Just wanted to do it, you know? Like, why the fuck not? Why could you not announce your breakup? Like, a bunch in advance to let people know. It just makes sense to me. It's not milking it anyway. I think it's just doing it properly. Square in the eye, first song. 
Well, a kid smacked in the arse. Yeah, he smacked me in the face. I don't even know who the fuck he was, but fair play to him. <laughs> Gave me a shiner. So. Got a massive shiner. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know. Day one is fucking shit. That's the way. Drive on if you want. So, you want to just jump in our car, but you got your license with you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, just jump in our car for a minute. Do you want any other documentation? Or no, just, just your license. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow, solid day, yeah. Uh, so, got to go to Lockerbie Police Station now uh, and get another van because we're 800 kilograms overweight. It's probably all the pork pies in Oz's guitar case, but fuck, who knows? <laughs> Station. See what happens, I guess. We'll, we'll leave the venue, we'll drive to Carlisle yeah. with the three vans. Yeah. Um, Oz will just have to not drink tonight. Yeah. Well, the reason why Oz isn't driving a van right now is because he's had two beers on the way up. Uh, also, the litre beers as well. Something like that. Look, I've drunk two litres of beer. Yeah, yeah, so, wow, well, quite big bottles. Fuck's sake, why don't you drink that? What time did he drink two litres of beer? Uh, I don't know, what do you reckon, maybe? About 12. About 12 o'clock in the afternoon? You don't do litres of beer, man, that's crazy. Alright, mate, so what we'll do is, we'll drive we'll drive back to the hotel in Carlisle. Yeah. Then, uh, with all three vans. Then we'll... Unload the new van. Yeah. Put that shit back in your van. Yeah. Then you can piece with a few people to Manchester. Yeah. Where there's going to be a hotel for you. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ooh. You get free breakfast as well. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, mate. Thank you. Right, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what a kerfuffle. <laughs> Josh Mansfield, road crew. Can you remember the address for the, uh, the cat house, maybe? <laughs> Googly. Pressure stew, or you 
What, mate? Good in pressure? No, I don't really care, mate. It's, it's what it is, isn't it? I just fucking hate the police. Fuck you, police. <laughs> fucking money grabbing pieces of fucking shit. That, that is fucked up. They must be on the fiddle. Three people in 24 hours. The police. Fuck the police. Germany and we travel to Glasgow for celebrating the awesome guys of your demise one fucking last time tonight. I am Francis, I'm from Hong Kong. I just hope your demise you love the sweets and love the card. Uh, my name is Sean. Um, played in Van by my hands, Azrael Departures, all of which to the few demise uh, for the various years, probably about Coming up for maybe eight years, something like that, knowing the band. Um, just just through, through gigs and stuff like that. Got close with them quite early on and all, always were good to us, always treated us good. They seem to be, you know, they apply to all all corners of hardcore, really. Not not just hardcore, they, you know, they transcend that genre. They've, they, they're they touring with Terror or Madball, but then they're on tour with Young Guns and everybody still loves it. Which is cool. So it's got like a real mass appeal while still being, still being real music, still being just like whatever the fuck they want to do and when they want to do it. Never, you know, they have driven themselves as long as I've known them. It's not like they don't fucking mess about on nightliners really, and you know, it's, it, they kind of keep a, keep their feet on the ground, which is cool. It's rare for a band to who, who uh, experience success. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yourself. Yeah. That's amazing. You. What? Yeah. And it's rainbow colours inside. <laughs> just like us. Rainbow yeah, colours exactly. inside. Like didn't that. sink <laughs> in. Like, <laughs> it didn't feel like our last ever tour. Because it was so good, like every show was amazing. Um, it still didn't feel like this was the last time we were going to do it. Um, it felt very just... It felt very just like nothing mattered uh everything we were doing everything we were just it just was just fun the last tour is just fun that's all it mattered like as long as we we're having a good time as long as the people that come to the show is having a good time didn't really matter did it um and every night i was just like fuck you know this band you know it meant a lot to some people 
And there was a lot of people who are some of our best friends in the world who would come out to these shows who would genuinely, we see, get emotional and like cry and like thank us for stuff. And it's like, shit, you're, it, was, it, was, it was more than just a band. It was like, it was just a thing that we brought people together and we had fun. And everyone that we came around, we just wanted them to have fun as well. It was never, we were never about egos or anything. We just wanted everyone who was cool with us to have the best time ever, whenever we were about. So that's what the last time in the UK was. I'm Cameron Hack, CMH Live promoter here in Manchester. Uh, where did you first meet you the most? Uh, probably 2005. I did a terrible show from at the Star and Garter here in Manchester. Probably about 20 people showed up. It was a bad time. <laughs> they, they've evolved from like just being a basic meat, meat and potato hardcore band to being something a bit more like I don't know, a bit more credible. Just be quiet a minute. Be quiet a minute. I just need to know. I just need to know. We're amazing! Protect us! I'm glad I finally got to do like the last show from here in Manchester. Uh, I've had some of my best times with them. Going to Japan with them in 2012 was fucking incredible. Watching them play to 3,000 people a night in Japan was just mind blowing. Uh, watching them play in Europe to fucking kids going at AFC Ape shit at festivals. Just yeah, seriously. Best anyway, dudes ever. Through my, five years of, through my nearly five years of being in the organizer, there's been one person that every time they've come to Manchester, I've been so drunk and fucked in his house, and he is so cool with it. He is like one of my best friends in the world that I love coming to Manchester to see because he's one of the best things in the world. And seriously, if you've been to a show in this room, you've probably been to one of his shows. There he is, that man right there. This man, yo, this man right here, he is one of the 
greatest dudes I've ever met. So thank you so much for doing everything for us. He's been your demise from the beginning. Paul has been his fan and welcome you so much. I, I want everyone, no, seriously. Seriously, that being said, I want everyone in this room to put their hands together for my boy Cameron Hack. Let's see you! Here's one person that I will, for, I will solidly remember for the rest of my life, and he is one of the best dudes ever, so keep going to shows, yeah, this Cameron's hat show will definitely be there, whatever it may be, Avatar, people dressed in blue and fucking each other, I don't know what you're doing out there. But, um, there was a time in 2011 where they needed a new tour manager, and we were talking to their manager and, and Stu and a few of the other guys, I, um, it, was the, it was the logical sense for me to step forward, and go from merch guy to tour manager. So they, knowing that I was a tour manager for my best friends was, was the greatest thing that I'd heard. And this was February 2012. Uh, two weeks later, I then flew to America to propose to the girl that I met in America because of your demise. She said yes, and ew. If it wasn't for your demise, then I wouldn't have had the chance to tour in the greatest country in the world. I wouldn't have had the chance to make all these lifelong friends. And I wouldn't have had the chance to meet the girl of my dreams because of your demise, because of the opportunity that they gave me to some fucking punk, hunk, punk hardcore kid, give him a chance to go and see the world. Because of that, I'm now living in America, married to an American girl because of the American tour that I did with them. They mean the world to me. It's over. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> what the hell? Joe, say never a Manchester last night was pretty intense, it was pretty crazy, uh, kind of hit, hit home a little bit I guess last night, but I feel like because we're doing two London shows, you know, like, I guess the Saturday night is really the one, like, it's probably going to hit home hardest, but tonight might, you never know. You'll see, late night rap fights from Port Carey Street, Richmond belongs to me! The best place to ever be! Um, how did I first meet them? I got on a tour bus and there was a bunch of people on there. They didn't know I was actually working for them. Ed was just like, who's this fucking guy? Um, they thought I was there with TUI, apparently, and then I started quizzing them about, what was it? They, they all had G-Shocks, and I was like, have you guys got some sort of G-Shock endorsement? And I was like, oh, this guy's a bit fucking full on, isn't he? Have a bit bit forward, um, and then they realised when I was at the front of house desk on the first show that I was actually their sound engineer. Their last EP that they did, I thought was great. I thought they had they had more songs in in them. Definitely, it was a little premature, but I think they'd done it for such a long time and not gotten enough out of it to be financially stable, which is a big part of it. Um, which is probably down to someone, um, which. I ain't gonna say anything about, but um, yeah, it's it's a shame. I had you up against the car. What were you thinking? With my hands in your hair, no sound is slowing down Balloons, confetti cannons, toilet roll, say it. Uh, Vomit, champagne. Oh, oh, We've done oh, this list. 
¿Dónde es esto? Vale, my show shirt from last night so I don't really know where it is. It could be in it. It's not a car boat. I was in Portugal, I just found my t-shirt. So wet. It's fucking. Mr. Serious here. <laughs> First time ever. Oz, uh, tell us about yours. How do you feel about your demise breaking up? Upset, mate. Yeah? Gonna miss it? Of course I am. When are you touring with Well, for me, it was like the fact like of having to get on with real life you know i've lived throughout my whole 20s as if i was a teenager no cares as such just like you know it was fun and um didn't really think about it much it was always like nagging in the back of my mind but you know i just kind of just pushed it aside just blocked it out and you know I, it was it was when we started the uk tour the final UK tour it really sunk in it was like shit man I've spent so many years countless days hours months with these guys they're like my best friends like we're family we're not friends we're family we're not like just a band like we're just some random dudes in it we're like we've lived out of each other's pockets we've you know we've gone through hard times we've gone through great times we've played shows no money and like not being able to eat and just help each other out and that's what got us through just the friendship the bond between us Hi, I'm Scott. I'm your Demises merch guy. Uh, I've been working for the band since uh, March 2012. Uh, my first tour with them was 2011. I was working for Stick To Your Guns. They're just some of my best friends in the world. Um, I love the band so much and I'm, I'm really sad that this is the last show ever, but um, it's just been some of the best times ever in my life. And I, I want to thank them for everything that they've, they've did for me. If it wasn't for this band, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Person, Pretty extensive. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Trying to like yeah, siphon it out really. But how many are on there? Should we get balloons as well? Well we have 30 and so oh, far that's about 70. We for us if we can get uh, Fuck it. Well, we've got these, we got the print, these printed though, so uh, basically you just give these a couple of these with the guest list and then uh, you just give these to people when you see them. They don't know the difference. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Little tip. Aspiring TMs. Um, I'm Ray, I'm Stu's brother. I'm Phil, James' brother, Jimmy's brother. And um, we're here to talk about being brothers of uh, two of, you know, your the big models. dogs. Yeah, the big dogs, Stu and Jim. Um, nothing but positives and love for our brothers, I think. Absolutely. You know. Got their backs. Me and Phil were only just chatting and just saying that it's it's rare. Well, you know, a lot of brothers aren't close. And, like, you know, Phil's so close to Jimmy and, like, likewise with me and Stu. And, you know. You can um, tell it means a lot. Yeah, man. And, like, just so full of admiration for them for everything they've done. and Absolutely. You know. It's crazy how much that has sort of grown since Jimmy said I've gotten, well, I might be playing bass for this band. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. And how much it has happened since then. You know, and I think just the fact that, you know, by the seat of their pants, they've gone around the world, like, so many times and, you know, and literally done it off their own backs, you know, with very sort of, like... Shit management. Yeah, you know, and no record label support. They've done it for themselves to get out to the fans. 
and it's always been about the music. And Absolutely. It started with the music and it'll finish with the music, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, meeting Toby Morrison H two O and you know, playing shows with like Comeback Kid and more than anything Terror as well. They're like, you know, they the, the boys hold those guys in such high regard. They're a fucking amazing band and you know, for them to be looking out for them as well and you know, it's just it's, it's sick, you know, it's just it's amazing. Nice. I just never thought it would, it would come that far really from yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's, do you know what? It's been nothing but them sticking together as the core of the five of them and just fucking having each other's backs. And exactly, just it's doing everything for possible. Everything, yeah, you know, exactly. Just, and, you know, what a, it's just, you know, what better celebration than being here today? And, you know, I'll say cheers to that. Yeah, girl. absolutely. Cheers, man. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, respect and love to our brothers, all five of them. Nothing man. but love, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The after party, you know we were having the after party tonight. Yeah. When I went to that club and you came with me, and then you you fucking late as me. I was hanging out with Nyla and ended up staying at Sammy Hubbard's house. And what happened? Nothing. Well, that was a great story. I've been friends with them for years, really, just through hardcore shows and friends with Ed. Uh, 2011, they took me on tour with them around the world, which I can't thank them enough for. They've been brilliant. Like, they started off from just a small DIY band, playing shitty shows and backwards and nowhere, like low stuff on a Tuesday night, and then just grown throughout that. Always done it on their own terms, taking friends' bands with them, supported their friends, done it all the right way, haven't like, hung onto the back of anyone, not ridden any trends, just done it their own way through hard graph, touring, writing records. It's brilliant, even though the last shows, booking friends' bands, playing like good shows with good people, using good promoters, it's everything, it's the way bands should do things. We are! We're in the jam, you bitch! Okay, um, here we are, you and Amai's final show, uh, two of two, Camden Underworld. I'm here currently with Jammy Bitch. So, Jammy Bitch, what do you think this means to you? How sad are you? Well, there's only half of me left, but the jam's still there and I'm having a really good time. Um, BWP are up next and your demise, but I guess it's my demise, really. It is indeed your demise. So, only half of you left now. What do you want to say to the guys? Well, I'm not really sure. Apparently ignorance never dies, so hopefully I can stay ignorant like the band. Thanks a lot. Remember, jam stays on the blade. Right, I'm gonna try and get onto the stage. Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah, man, and we'll hang later. Yeah, good. See you in a bit, lads. Uh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I decided to stay here so I could actually get on the stage. Man, like, it didn't really. Uh, I don't think it still has hit me right now. Uh, I mean, those definitely some emotions. Like the first day we played the intro, uh, we we chose it for a laugh, but I was like, I looked around, everyone's kind of getting emotional. I was like, shit, this is the last like last five times we will play these songs. Uh, but then I just kind of it just felt like standard shows. It wasn't it wasn't sad per se. It was just like it was a good time for me. It was perfect. It was emotional. It, was, it didn't really feel too emotional until like the very last show, I guess. But uh, 
each one, each one, you just kind of go, oh, there's one down, you know, there's four more to go, three more to go, you know. Uh, and then the last London show came about and it was like, oh, finished sound check. And I was like, oh, I'll never have to do that again <laughs> with these guys. Right. Thank fuck, I don't have to listen to all do it anymore. Uh, and then, yeah, and then it got pretty emotional on stage at the last show, to be fair. Uh, it was got a bit much, you know. We surround but. ourselves with people that we love. We wish there were people here some of the time, and also there are people that we really do not like who are here. But I know, Oz, you wanted to say something right now because... In all seriousness, this man right here is pretty much the glue that keeps us together. So I know you wanted to say something, so please do. Like, these guys have been there for me when I was at my lowest and when shit went down, and I love these guys more than anything. That they're my brothers, and I fucking love them. Thank you, we love you. I think I was, it was kind of, I was expecting it, you know. I, I don't know why I was there. I was, how was I not going to cry? You know? Um, emotions were running very high, but I think it was such a good send off that you know, we cried for a bit and then we were like, oh, that was actually really good. So. Oh, 
I mean, it's easy. You fucking did it. That's the thing, man. Right? Is that be it? What? I don't know where Jimmy's gone. I haven't seen his face. Feel we did alright. Yeah, just it's all right. Yeah, we did alright. <laughs> It still, for me, hasn't sunk in properly, but the amount of people genuinely upset, crying, even myself, like looking around and seeing like the rest of the band crying and like Mike and Joe and like our families and stuff and just kids coming to the show, it was like, it just was like, it's the most like insanely cool, emotional thing ever and like, you can never, you can never ex really understand what that feels like until you've done something that is so positive to so many people. Um, until you experience that, and it's like, it's heartwarming. It's fucking mad. Like, just five guys just did what they wanted, and the UK last tour kind of summed it all up. Really, it was the nicest thing I could ever say. It was amazing. So. I mean, the only thing I have to say to your demise is thank you. And that's not just from me, that's from all of our friends. That's from every single person, whether it's a fan or friend. Thank you for being as honest and honest a band that there ever has been. Um, it's gonna be tough going from touring the world and having adoring fans to, to being normal people. I've done it, not the head of Doring fans, but I was touring the world to being a normal person. And you have the memories that you had before. You have the memories of playing in Bangkok, in Kuala Lumpur, in America, in Scandinavia. Uh, live with those memories and just know that you made an impact on everybody's life. And we all thank you for that. I mainly just thank you. Thank you because I got the opportunity to go and see places that I otherwise wouldn't have necessarily seen or perhaps wouldn't have seen at that time and I needed to at that time. Um, and thank you for all the free lifts to Europe, which is always great too. To, uh, and just, I don't know, the bond, I think, the understanding, personal and private jokes, I think has been the crux of this entire thing. Great inside jokes, which are so cryptic and idiotic that Perhaps we don't even understand them either. That's probably something I most enjoy out of this entire thing. So thank you for that too. And uh, I don't know, just thanks for being great friends and, and allowing me this opportunity. And I hope that I have been some help <laughs> or not, as the case may be. Who knows? Oh, thank you for all the good times. Fucking, I'll miss you guys staying at my flat every fucking, <laughs> every fucking week, pretty much. Uh, playing FIFA and staying up until like 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning, just hanging out. I miss waking up in the morning, seeing Oz spread all, all over the floor and just these underwear stinking up my flat <laughs> and fucking stinking up my toilet as well, doing those horrible shits after all the kebabs he eats here in Manchester. Yeah. You've got to get some jobs now. This, <laughs> this is, uh, you've had your fun, but now it's time to do some real world shit, man. You've got to move out of mummy's house. <laughs> you've got to... <laughs> You gotta move away, you gotta get a job, you gotta sort of, you gotta pay bills, you gotta pay tax. It's horrible, man. I've been doing it for a while and I don't like it. It's pretty gross, but yeah, good, good luck with all that. But Oz will be alright. Oz is the only one with any conceivable skills from the whole band, so he's gonna get on the best. The rest of you have just got a sort of uh, scratch to get by or something. I don't know. What are you most thankful for? Thankful for with the band? Yeah. I don't know, you know, just short and sweet. I'm just thankful for being able to do this, living my dream, playing music, like, around the world. That, that is literally, that's it. That's all I can say. And your final ever comment on your demise? Your demise has been a massive part of my life. 
see me like you know see me through the good times the bad times in life you know like with anything and I love those dudes like they're my boys they're my brothers and I'm gonna miss doing this with them you know I'm gonna miss it like I think like I mentioned before like the probably the, the most important thing to me is the friends I've made through doing it because even though if they live in Australia even if they live in America, you know, Europe, anywhere, it doesn't matter. You're like, even if every time they come through the UK, you know, we'll go and say them and it's like, you know, it'll be like they live down the road from us and we see them all the time. And it's, you know, that, I think that's definitely the coolest part about it. I've got friends across the world that I know I can like rely on whenever and you don't really get that with anything else. I don't think you don't get that with any other job. Uh, so yeah, aside from being able to travel the world, see all the places I wanted to see, meet a bunch of people that were cool and supported what I did because I thought it was cool. I guess it's mainly because people liked us. So I got, I got to thank everybody that's ever done anything for our band, regardless of whether you fucked us over, whether regardless of whether you supported us from day one, regardless of whether you stopped liking us, started liking us, couldn't care less. That's what's up. Cheers for, <laughs> cheers for letting me do it though. <laughs> How do I wrap it up? Um, to the guys, um, thank you for you know being there for me. Fuck, that was that didn't take long, did it, to get me upset? <laughs> Thanks for being my brother. Like we did all right, <laughs> did fucking well. Just thanks. Just being given the opportunity to tour around the world for like seven years with four of the best dudes I ever met in my life. Uh, couldn't be more thankful for that. Learned a lot just from touring, man. Just being around the world, you learn a lot more than, than I ever fucking realized. Uh, meeting amazing people all around the world, people you would have never met ever before. Uh, it's refreshing. It was all, I'm never going to stop traveling now. I've got the serious bug. Uh, but yeah, man, just getting to travel and just doing it for free and doing it for like a, a reason that people are, uh, want us to go there because they like our band, that's fucking insane to me. You think that someone the complete opposite way around the world, other side of the world, is listening to your band, they want you to come play in their town, that's, that's nuts, eh? It's kind of weird that I have to tell my kids about this one day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it's been the best time ever. Join a band. Couldn't recommend it anymore. <laughs> Dangerous to you.
Danny, Danny. Okay, Danny! Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's right. It's on it's such a good angle from here, dude. Danny coming. <laughs> Danny! Danny, Danny the Pino, quick, 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 quick. Go on, Ed. Oh my god. <laughs> get him right down, get your pants right down. Right. Straight down. No, 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 straight lips on arsehole. Literally mouth <laughs> on his bum off. Ready? <laughs> That's not my bum hole, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 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 Oh.